here is my double acting oscillating engine 15 millimeter bore 50 millimeter stroke and as you can see here so I've got a 25 millimeter offset on the crank if I just undo the spring on the back here and I'll rotate it in a second so you can see this but let's just take this off for a sec because that then we'll release the cylinder and the comrade. So we'll take that off. There's the spring. Yeah. There's the nut that goes on the back. We'll just pull this off just gently there. And now you can see here's the comrade. Here's the, the big end of that comrade. And here you can see the cylinder. So I've got two ports that open into that cylinder here on the back face of this uh, cylinder block. So these open into the inside, go straight through. One at one end, one at the other. And what we've got is a thin piston that gets pushed by the steam pressure up and down. And it gets pushed and pushed in both directions. Yeah. Now if we look on the actual the valve block here, that's the valve block at the back, the two ports at the top on each side is where the steam or compressed air comes in. The two ports at the bottom are where the exhaust gas, steam, wasted steam or compressed air escapes. So that's the exhaust ports at the bottom, inlet ports at the top. What happens is when we put this cylinder on there, these two ports here are on the center line of that cylinder and as it rocks up and down as the crank goes round, that means that this port aligns with the top here when it's down here and that means that steam goes into this end of the cylinder. When it rocks that way it means that this port is lined up with the exhaust and the gases can be pushed out of the cylinder. And the same on this end when this one's this is so this end as it's the opposite end and the rotation point is in the center here it's the opposite point on the crankshaft when we get steam in or opening up to the exhaust port. So it's, so it's a very simple, very simple valve system. If we put this back in, just to put the crank back on there. Yeah, the big end on the of the conrod back on. So that's uh, and I just put this nut on here. Now this, this is required, so we've got a spring on this side, and as you can see, if I just push that off, it just, that spring holds the cylinder against that valve plate, against that plate there, and that's the main, that plate is the main body of the engine. So now you can see, as it rocks, it's free to rock, I can change this nut and I can increase the force of that cylinder onto this valve plate here. As it rocks up and down it goes between inlet steam and exhaust as I said on this end and the same on this end. That then drives the crank, the force drives this crank round, that rotation there two and a half times I run it the flywheel rotates. Now originally, and I still might do it, as I was going to take the exhaust valves ports out of here, take the exhaust gas with a pipe and then blow it, each one in turn, onto this flywheel. So effectively have a, a sort of open steam turbine on there that would allow me to just extract a little bit more energy from the, from the gas or from the, the steam. Now, so let's, uh, let's, as I said, let's run it on compressed air. What I've got is a I've got a little compressor, tiny little one. Um, I'll just uh, fix these these glands on here. So let me just move my hand so you can see it. So a quarter inch, forty teeth, forty threads per inch uh, thread on there, and then this one here simple piece of silicon tube for the compressed air it's really low pressure it's literally running at the, around about uh, 10 psi very low very low pressure we don't need much just to operate this engine so 
and just tighten that up. Just make sure that's tight. That's it. That's pretty good. All right, got. So now I'll I'll switch this uh, on, and we'll see. Hopefully, it will start straight away. Oh, wow, they are. So we can see the engine rocking and alternating between air in one end, air in the other end, and exhaust out of one end, exhaust out of the other. So as it comes to the bottom, it's on the exhaust port. As it goes to the top, it's on the inlet steam or inlet compressed air. And I'll just rotate that round. You can see so that, as I said, that spring maintains that, that force on there. There's a, there's a bearing here just to reduce the friction. If I just back off that, that force, I'm only at 10 psi, so I can back this right off. I'll just start it, just going to rotate again. It'll run a bit faster. I've, I'm taking the friction down a bit. I don't have to maintain the force to keep that, that gas joint there, to, to make that gas joint uh, seal. And I'm reducing the friction, it will run a little bit faster. And then you can't see it, but this exhaust is coming out of these two holes here. And that's being pulsed out of these two exhaust ports here. The engine runs, as I said, there's a brass bearing there and there's friction between the cylinder and this and this valve plate. Um, but otherwise the engine's running with a bearing on the big end here and then two bearings on the crank and then two bearings on this on the flywheel with the gear here so the, and they're ball racers those are so all of these are ball bearings and then this one's a plane bearing here that the uh, the cylinder rotates on very small amount of motion here and, and I've pre-oiled all of this so it's all running nice and free that's the engine if you like this engine, and, and I've got lots of other engines, come and see them run, then, then subscribe to me, hit the subscribe button down below, so go down and hit the subscribe button, give me the thumbs up, and, uh, and we'll post more engines, I hope you enjoy them.